share thing. Oh. All right, is everyone seeing my screen? Yes. Imagine a place. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, I got in, for the introduction, I just want to mention, I really don't introduce myself anymore as a photographer. It's more a photo artist. And now with this AI stuff, it's probably, uh, you say something about prompt this or that. The, the whole point of the presentation tonight is to show you what I've been doing, where it can go. And if you're interested, I'll show you how to get started. It's really fun. I've already had a, a class in this. I had 12 people and they've all gotten really excited. And now I'm gonna set a new one up. Uh, January 14th, here in Kent, my uh, studio, I'll be teaching another class on this from the beginning and then some advanced work. So anyway, there are two parts to doing what I do, and that is Discord and Mid Journey. So the first thing you would do is to download Discord or your Mac or your uh, PC, and then when you open that up, this is a social gathering place. It's not the program that you're going to use. What you then do is you add the mid journey and you, you download it, you sign in, you do all these things that have to be done. There's a few hoops, but uh, basically what I've seen, if you can just take your time, go through it, eventually you'll come up with a screen that will be like, this one. Hey, can you mute right everyone? <clears throat> yeah, I will. I will go on with that. So when you click on Mid Journey, well, there's a lot you of click background. on Discord, this little guy comes right. up. Are Thank you me. seeing that spinning guy? Yes. Yeah. All right, good. And <clears throat> he is, again, the social meeting place for doing Mid Journey, or you can put Dali in there also. So this is what I get. The reason mine will look different than yours if you're a first timer is you will come in and you will not have the ability to have your own little bot over here. Can you see that? It says uh -huh. bot top left corner. So yeah. what's happening if you are just doing the trial Unmute yourself, Chair. Is there you go. All right. Uh, Thank you. When you first come into this, you will see everyone else's work. And when you put yours in, it will go into a queue and then you'll have to chase it. And a lot of people get upset about it, but it's free. And you get to, you know, play a couple hours to see if you really like it. If that happens and you say, I really like this, you can then order it for either $10 a month or uh, $30, and each one gives you a certain number of uh, times that you can use it. I have the 30 a month because I'm on it all the time, but some people have been doing 10 and getting along fine. So anyway, when you get your bot, this is what your screen will look like. And what will happen is you now have all these choices, and you say, well, what am I supposed to do with all this? Well, that's what I'm going to explain right now. But before I do that, I'm going to go into Keynote. Are you seeing my Keynote screen? How bad ideas change the world? Yes. Yeah. yeah, yes, we are. Great. So I'm going to play this. So I put together a presentation to kind of, uh, not only as an introduction, but give you some things to really think about and what is now becoming a media uh, choice for getting debate going. And Here's how I would like to begin. Here's a guy that killed your 35 millimeter film in the darkroom. And I know a lot of you have done darkroom work as I have, I've spent thousands of hours on it, but this guy is the reason we no longer have dark rooms. I'm gonna get rid of this spot up here. So how did that happen? He invented the digital camera and it wasn't much, but it was the beginning. And today we have these. Here's a guy who would not listen. 
The horse is here to stay, but the automobile is only a novelty, a fad. So said the president of the Michigan Savings Bank. Well, we saw how that worked out. This is my wife's great grandpa, and uh, he never got a, to work in a, a nice high powered car like we have, but he had a high powered horse. This is where it's gone. Okay, he really messed things up. There's no chance the iPhone is going to get any significant market share. Steve Ballmer said that. And we, this is the first computer that I ever worked on in the upper left corner. A friend of mine had a little more money than I did, and he brought it down. He said, Jerry, you got to see this thing. And I started drawing on it. I said, oh, yeah. So these are quotes of people who said things that didn't come true. The world potential market for copying machines of 5,000 at most. IBM told the eventual founders of Xerox. Television won't be able to hold on to any market it captures after the first six months. People will soon get tired of staring at a plywood box every night. Xanax said that. <laughs> Everything that can be invented has been invented. That was the head of the Department of Patents. So I have a few things I want to go through. Usually I don't like to put a lot of words on screen, but some of these are pretty pretty important. So they're talking about how fascinating this is. And this guy was talking about how it will dominate in the coming years. And he says the tools are going to get better. My I first got involved in January, I signed up. And so I've been in it almost a year. And I've already seen incredible changes and in how they're working. So Dal E as in Salvador Dali, is one of the ones that a lot of the uh, AI artists are going to. And I have tried it. Um, it can do certain things for me, but it's not the one that I like as an artist. It's so photographic that uh, it just doesn't give me any limit. It gives me limits to what I want to do as an artist. So he says, it's not just drama public debates, legal arguments, and a lot of people are going to be asking this question, what about copyright? What about trademarks? What about all of that? Uh, I taught a course in patents, and the one thing I would mention is everyone right now is saying, well, I'm going to sue, I'm going to sue, you're taking my stuff. To be able to prove that they have your specific image <clears throat> is going to be pretty difficult because what's happening is this AI engine has two algorithms fighting each other. And what it does is it fuses your words into imaging that it finds that it's been programmed with. And there are millions of these in its engine. So the point is, is once you make an image, how can you prove it's a part of yours? I think it's gonna be very, very difficult. So here's your similarities to photography. <clears throat> This, this guy really threw out a lot of good stuff. I'm not going to go through it now since um, uh, you are uh, taping this. You can go back and, and start reading these, and I think you should, because this is how they're trying to figure out, is this going to stay? Is this going to ruin people's lives? And he does a lot of, he has a very good space on this. If you take a photo, you don't create the picture, you take it. You find the scene you want, you capture it in the way you want. It's curation. I like that. <clears throat> he goes on to say, instead of walking around in the real world and taking pictures, you can now walk around in a latent space that interpolates past human creations and take pictures of it. Latent space photography. And just like photography, it's art. It requires the art, the eye of an artist. And I'll show you more about that. So here's how photography adapted and all the painters were mad. And as you found out, they both get along quite well now. 
I just got a check today from an art gallery for my work, and most of it was just photography. Let's see what happened here. Get off there. There we go. Now, AI programs will continue to innovate. The reason I know that, I taught students in Hudson with an IQ up to 192. I know what they can do. This is not, this is only beginning. And for those of you who say, I'm not going to be a part of it, that's okay. But remember, the caboose has now been eliminated from trains too. You better get into the engine. This is not going away. If it terrifies you or it inspires you, I'm tonight going to try to show you some things that will inspire you. Reports of art's death are greatly exaggerated. Boy, I, I totally agree with that. New tools don't kill art, they expand it. Photography showed us that artists will continue to adapt to new tools. And most of you who use Photoshop are already using AI tools that have been developed in that program. Prompt engineering, the newest tool, artists will thrive despite. And one thing I will say, this is what can be done with an early version of DAL-E. As you can see, they look like photos. My very first picture I made, I said, I want a biosphere in Arizona. The dome is made out of glass. The forest is inside the dome. It's realistic, surrounded by a forest, ambient light, lawn chairs in the front, hyper-realistic, and a warm glow in the atmosphere. And this is what it came out with. Again, I'm only using words. The supercomputer spits out the image. I said, what the world needs now is love, sweet love. And this is what I got. And again, you're dealing with something in Las Vegas. When you pull that lever, you don't know what you're going to get. <laughs> if you pull this AI lever, it's the same thing. Now you can guide it, which I'll show you more about, but you will not know exactly what you're getting on the first pull. Wide angle, cyberpunk, city in the future, an anime background, detail. Those are the words that created this cityscape. And again, these are my very first images that I created. 1930 dust bowl, severe dust storm, desert dry ground, dust, sky of dust, old small shed, shed is gray weathered wood, shabby realistic little boy leans into the wind, boy holds a rake, realistic little boy at front door of shed, atmospheric, gloomy. And it kind of did it and it kind of missed. So I kept doing the lever pull and AI, and these are some of the images I got. And as you see, they, they vary from severely terrible to almost there. So then I found out I could take photos and put them into Midjourney, which is the program I, I really like. And I started getting things like this. And one of my friends wants to buy this print for his new home in California in the style of Albert Bierstadt. That's another thing you can do in Midjourney. You say, I want it in the style of, and it will try to find that person and imitate their style. So this is one of the lighthouses. Large seashore waves, many waves, solitary person standing on the shore, hyper-realistic, small lighthouse on cliff. Young father, his baby, golden sunset. Again, they vary in the artistic uh, approach. You have to, the other thing I, I want to mention a lot tonight, if you are a Photoshop guru, you are really in good shape to use AI. A lot of the young people are using it and they don't have those skills. And so the things that they're put, putting online are not very, what I would say, finished. So you take your Discord, you throw it in your applications after you've downloaded it, and then you get mid-journey and you get those and they'll talk to each other. Now, when you begin, you're gonna be a newbie. And that's where all of the other people working in the newbie uh, zone will be putting their photos up and you'll have to keep 
chasing yours at the bottom of this screen. So it's, everybody complains about it, but yeah, it's free. After you've done it a long time, uh, you'll understand that it's fine, that you can, you'll at least learn some of the nuts and bolts of how this works. Then your subscription, here's a $10 or a 30. If you do the 10, it's limited use, 200 images a month. And I go through that in a couple of days. There's general commercial terms, et cetera. They, they will um, say they can use your image if they need to, but you also own it. So a lot of people are debating that. They say, well, I don't know if I should do that or not. Well, look, at it. it's the beginning. Eventually, you might be able to get full copyright ownership and say no one else can use it, but not at this point. These are instructional videos. And again, if you download this uh, recording, you can go to these. A lot of good information. I took a course in this. It was very cheap. And I learned a lot. And I would suggest if you really want to get your hooks into it, you take some time and go through some of these and, and learn. So I love science fiction. I even have a picture of myself with Isaac Asimov. And I've met uh, about three or four of their top artists or top writers. But I have always read and studied science fiction. And now I can make my own science fiction images. I've been asked many times, why don't you do a book? Why don't you do these, send these in for a cover of a, of a book and so on. Of course, I'm terrible at money, so I don't know how to do that. I just enjoy the art. I ask it to create mountains with storms. And then I said, well, you know, I've been to Zion. I love Zion. Let's see what I can do with, with telling it to look like Zion. So here you see a progression. And the other thing you do once you get a picture is you can upscale it and give it even more detail. You can also ask it, ask the program to create all new ones if you don't like the four that you were given. Not bad. Then you frame it, you put it on the wall and who's to know that you created it in an AI. They might say, wow, did you take that and then, then work on it a little bit in Photoshop and you can kind of look at them and go, yeah, maybe. Or you can change the sky, as you know, in Photoshop. I have a good time with Arroyos. I used to teach her science. I told my students to never camp in an arroyo, especially if there was a mountain range within 40 miles, because if there is a storm, uh, it'd be the last time you camp. And many people have actually died in arroyos. So <laughs> I make arroyo pictures with, with these floods and so on. I love lightning. So my wife, who is a mental health therapist, was talking about people that she has who have PTSD and problems. So I said, just and she didn't like AI at all. She said, I think this is silly. And I said, well, it's going to be here. Give me some words. So she just started giving a few explanatory terms that, uh, about how she tries to get these people to feel better about themselves. And this is the picture that came up. And she went, oh, my God. Again, these are very early I was experimenting. My uh, sister-in-law got very, got, uh, she fell and really damaged herself. So she has a farm with a lot of wheat and so on. So I created this angel for her. She liked it. A healing angel for Jenny. As you see, the one on the left is the original. And I had to recreate a new face for it. Jacob says, I, I agree that we need to embrace it. As the former art director for film and TV, this type of AI is going to put thousands of people out of jobs. Maybe not at the highest level artists, but the most designers work at small agencies and magazines, making logos, banners, and posters. These people spent decades to learn their craft. These designers and illustrators are right to be concerned. While the software may benefit humanity as whole, it will have the effect on designers, illustrators, as cars did on wagon makers. 
AI generated art is sweeping the world, casting a clear divide in the sand. It seems artists either love it for its vast inspiration and possibilities or hate it for its elimination of the process and soul. And I happen to know that he's absolutely correct. Uh, one of my former students is creating a board game. It's science fiction. And he needed photos of rocket ships, etc. And I was showing him some of my work and he wrote back, he says, I fired my illustrator, I've hired you. It has started. I like bourbon, so I made one that's getting a little razz from the sky there. Storms in Sierra Nevadas. Again, all with words. But now you're really, you're really mad or you're enthralled. The future of the development will only continue to advance with or without you. I will continue to explore its possibility for creative avenues combined with my photo art. Art and science work in quite different ways, but bad as it may sound, I have to admit, I cannot get along as an artist without the use of one or two sciences. In my view, the great complicated things that go on in the world cannot be adequately recognized by people who do not use every possible aid to understanding. Bertolt said that. I have a very intelligent cat, as you can see. As he grows old, I'm sure he'll be reading more. Now, this is Dal E. So I went in, started studying it, and I said, Sierra Nevada mountains with a rainstorm and one lightning flash in the sky, an arroyo filled with flood water, large granitic rocks, hyper-realistic, and this is what I got. As you can see, it's nearly photographic. Oil painting of the Sierra Nevada mountains in a thunderstorm. So yeah, you can throw in the idea you want it to look like a cartoon, an oil painting or a photo or anything else that you can think of in an illustrative manner. Large field of sunflowers, sunny day, girl standing. She's got a dress on with a forest surrounding her. Fluffy cumulus clouds. Now in the beginning, when I was just starting out, the faces and hands in these programs were abysmal. You could not use them. Uh, I found out some tricks later, but also they've improved them quite a bit, although they're still not perfect. These are some Dali science fiction pictures. I thought they were terrible. I said, uh, a Dali is not where I want to be. I want to be in mid journey. And again, when my students saw the first images, I said, uh, what do you think? He says, you're hired. Now, there are challenges. I'm not going to get into this real deep right now, but the idea is that you can go online and learn exactly how these things work. And if you're a geek like I am, it's kind of interesting. But if you're not, stay away and just use the program. All right, let's get out of this. I'm back in my program. This is a program that unfortunately for some of us is kind of like having their first piece of chocolate. You have to have the whole box. I actually can spend an entire day in front of this thing. Here's how it works. You have down here a, it says message at Mid Journey Bot. You click in there and you see a blinking cursor. I hope everybody's seeing this. And you type the word I-M-A-G-I-N-E. You hit the return key and it says, okay, now what do you want to do? Well, if I didn't put it in right, it will not give me the prompt. So make sure that you get that prompt coming up with that blinking cursor. Now, I said today, a man on Mars. And then I thought a little bit later after I made some images, well, it could have been a woman. So I said, an earthling. And these are the images that I started to get. And you get four at a time. And then you decide what you want to do with them. 
So you see this is just one session and you see that 200 is going to burn out pretty fast with the $10. So what you do is you say, in fact, let's do a different one. We'll say an earthling ing on and then we'll say uh, Titan or Europa or Ganymede or you know you pick a moon or wherever you want that person or you just say on a on an alien planet and you hit return and now you wait now there's two things going on you can do this with what we call a relaxed mode. And when you do that, you do not use up your fast mode time. Fast mode has, there's, you get so many per month. After you've used them up, you have to buy more if you want that. Or you wait until the next month and they automatically upgrade you back again. But if you're willing to, to sit and wait, like we're doing now, we, it takes a little longer, but I haven't found it's been excessive. But for tonight, I'm going to go F-A-S-T. And now it's going to, next time we do this, it's going to be in the, in the fast instead of the relaxed mode. So I could actually create a new one. I could say, imagine an earthling. on an alien planet, as soon as I learn how to spell. And hopefully that'll take off a little quicker. So you see up here, it's saying 0% in relaxed mode. This is 0% fast mode. Now this one has already started kicking in, so uh, we'll get to see it. And by the way, somebody's asked, well, if you use the exact same prompt, will you get the same picture? And the answer is never, never. Actually, I've done tests with it, never. The AI engine will always come up with a unique image. So here we are. Once you see that it says it's relaxed and it's done, you can click the image one time and there they are. Now that's quite an earthling, isn't it? So what I do then, I come down to the bottom corner, it says open original. So I click it once and then I enlarge it so that I can look at and study each image individually. So it's thinking that's my earthling on you know, an alien planet. When you click back, you click over in the sidebar and that'll go away. Now you've got your next one coming up. And this is the fast mode. So I click it once. I open the original. I make it bigger and I study it. As you see, pretty weird for what I actually thought I was going to get. Click back in here and you're, you're back to where we started. So on these, I said the first Earthling on Mars, and this is what I got. The problem is they're never perfect. So what you have to do is go into, let's see if I make sure I keep you guys on board here. Let's go to J album. <clears throat> And my AI art. Now let's go back and see if I have that one just a group. AI art part. Perfect. Um, I'll just I'll add another one. Let's go look for it. So I open up the uh, journey. And this is for tonight's class. So I had an image. And I said to myself, I wonder if you can see Phobos and Deimos from the surface of Mars. So I used to teach astronomy, so I uh, looked it up and I found out you can. So up in the corner is Deimos and Phobos, it's going to eclipse. And I thought, well, that's pretty cool. So then I thought, well, 
I went online and I got these pictures. That's how I got them and put them in Photoshop. But as you see here, it wasn't in the original one. And this one, I thought the helmet was way too big. And so what I did is I took this image into Photoshop and I used a program that a lot of you know about. Let's see if I can get that started. Make sure you're, you're still following me if, uh, if I lose you on one of these. So here's the image and I thought the helmet's too big. So I made a new layer and I went in filter liquify. And I got it a little bigger using the magnifier. And I came up and I got the one that says, oh, we're gonna make things smaller. And I just put it over top the helmet and I clicked it a couple of times. And I am able to create more of the scale. If it's not perfect, you can push it around a little bit. So you get just what you want. So that's a little trick that I've learned when the AI engine doesn't quite do what I want it to do. You see the difference. But again, in the beginning, you're not aware of some of this stuff because you're just overwhelmed with, with the kind of imaging you have to look at. I did the same thing for a lot of these other images, a lot of work. There's little pieces and parts that were wrong. And I said, well, that can all be fixed in Photoshop. And I spent a lot of time in Photoshop after I get the image. And like I got an auger. Oh, I moved that one. I got an auger because I wanted one of these to have an auger. And I thought, nah, I'll just use a laser. So here it is. It's drilling on one of the moons somewhere in the solar system. So none of this was in the original image. This was all created post. Also, I'm always looking at legs. It usually creates three legs, sometimes two or three hands uh, outside of the body. You have to really watch what you're doing. All right, let's go back to, let's see. Well, let's see, That'll, let's go back to the program. So we go back to Discord, and now you decide, well, are any of these worth having? And you say, well, let's give it another try. Well, down here is a double arrow. If you click that, it does everything over again using the same prompt, an earthling on an alien planet. So this is kind of a good idea if you have a program or you get an image that's close to what you want, keep clicking that and keep watching to see if it gave you what you had more in mind. And I can do the same for this one. The other thing you can do, let's say that we like one of these kind of as an image. I'll pick number three. So it's counting one, two, three, four. So let, I'll say four. So I go back and I say one, two, three, four. I'm going to click that and it will make an updated image of that one, of the little one. It'll add a lot more detail to it. So down here, you see what's happening, Earthling on Alien Planet. We got four more because I clicked this arrow, double arrow. You wait till the 100% goes away. And now we're ready to click it open, see what we got. Whole new ball game. If you get a, a globe up here in that sky that's not round, again, you can go back into Photoshop in that same area that I showed you and you can fix it. So let's see, how are we doing? Let's look at this one. That's a nice plant in the background. And uh, let's see. We're done here. This one's still running, you see it's, it's uh, 0%. Every now and then uh, you'll get a, a bot saying, uh, you can't do that. And what it means is you put in a prompt that's illegal. I put in the word pussy willows and it said, eh, can't use it. So I had to use cattails instead. <laughs> so you have to watch. They do have monitors that are looking for people who are trying to make news or horrific images of people that are going to be used in bad ways. So here's my new image with the detail. And I can say yes or no. And 
I'll show you what I do. I go into original, I grab it, and I take it right into Photoshop. And I assign a profile, Adobe RGB, because I, I've also bought a lot of frames. I'm gonna be framing some of this artwork. When you look at it, I'm gonna show you my technique for getting what I think are the best quality images. The first thing I do, I go to image, and I go to image size, <clears throat> and I say, uh, let's do a 200 resolution, because whatever you print, if you take it out to a book form, that'll work pretty well. In terms of size, 12 by 12, and I say, okay, and we have this new image, and it looks pretty good. Second thing I do is I go to filter, sharpen, unsharp mask, and I keep it in this range somewhere around here, and I click on a piece that is pretty important to me. I blow it up and I click on and off. I get in a little bit of sharpening, that's good enough. The next thing I do is I go and I adjust the hue and saturation. I usually pump it up a little bit, not more than 20 usually. And the last thing, and it probably won't work well in this image, but I'll show you, is I go into curves and I say, well, Let's take the black eyedropper and find the blackest black on here. And there it is right there. And I click it and I wait to see if I get any sort of a, sh of a shift in it. And if not, if, here's what happens if you go, uh, actually it's not working. Let's wait and see. I can do layer and try it again. So I go adjust curves in my black eyedropper, pop it, and I'm still not getting it the result on that. I don't know why. This looks fine. That looks fine. Don't know. But that's another thing I do and it usually increases the, uh, the color in a, in a real nice well. Then I say okay save as and then I, I have a folder here for book AI because I'm going to be printing these and I'll say oh do you want to Photoshop? No thank you. I go back over and I say I want to combine these. Shift Command E. Now I do it again. Save as. And it's going to ask you where to put it, my book. Now, notice it's ping. You can go ahead and make it a JPEG, but I've been using pings lately and they're pretty universal, so I leave it that way. The color profile, I, I usually use the Adobe and I say save and I'm done. Now if, when I print this it's going to look pretty good. In fact I did a book of uh, the fire pictures I shot of the uh, the when the the uh, plant here in downtown Kent uh, caught on fire a couple weeks ago I made a book and most of those were pings and they came out perfect. So that's kind of the way I go through things and, and uh, create this art but again it's, this is just the beginning because once you get to Photoshop, now you can do other things. Well, what about in here? What about what about this? Can I put pictures in here? A lot of people ask me about how to do that. Here's how you do it. Down there where it says message, there's a plus sign. You click it twice and this comes up. It says uh, pick a picture. Uh, okay, I got all kinds of them. I can, let's just use the uh, sunflower. Open it. And when you say open, it comes in here. And then here is the, the thing that a lot of people don't know how to do. You hit the return key. Now it's there for use. So the next thing you do, you hit your, your bar and you say imagine prompt, now watch, you grab it and you drag it into the prompt, you now have that image to use in AI. And you hit the, I usually put a uh, comma in there. And then you have to say more about it, what you want it to do. The other thing I've been doing, I highly recommend this, is in my notes, whenever I see something that's kind of interesting, I keep it here. And I've got a ton of 
<laughs> time. But here, 8K, very detailed, cinematic lighting, unreal image. I got all these cool things I can add, and I can take a piece of one, or I can go down and grab a bunch of them, sharp focus, and I say Command C. I go back, I say Command V, and then I hit the return. Now I'm using all of those extra codes to create an image that's totally unique, and we'll see what happens. Is everybody still on board here? I never hear anybody, so I don't know. Looks that way. Everybody's still on board. Good. Yep. Yep. Everybody's everybody's muted, Jerry. Okay, good. Jerry, is the what kind of a is it a, a raw file or a JPEG that comes out of this, or what is the file? Oh, that's a good question. I'm saving it as a as a ping or a JPEG, but when you put it in, in fact, we'll do it right now. I'll show you. There was the, there was the file that comes out of the AI. Yeah, I'll show you. <clears throat> okay. So I'm going to take you all the way through this. So now I've got four new images, and you see I've got some pretty wild stuff going on here, and that's good. So I say open the original, and I look at him. I go, ah, oh, this second one's pretty cool. So I'm going to go back, click over here. And I go to number two and I click it. And now it's going to re, redo the math of that particular image, but it will add more detail to it. Now, there are other things you can do, and I'll show you in a moment that uh, they vary in quality. So I'll show you what can be done, and you can decide if you want to do it or not. So I'm in fast mode, 0%. And I, this is where I grab my wine glass and I have a drink or I go get a sandwich if it takes a long time, usually not more than several minutes. So at the moment, you're using the same prompt. You're just giving it another shot with that particular image, the, uh, exactly the new right. variant. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. And in fact, we're going to do a lot more with that in a moment. Mm -hmm. But I'll answer your question of when it, what it comes out when we come into uh, Photoshop. But like I said, you don't know what you're getting. You pull that handle, <laughs> things come out of here. And that's where the debate has, has really raged. People will go, well, well, I said, look, I can create these spaceships. And these, my, my guys who have hired me, they had no idea they could be that detailed and that, uh, that amazing. So the point is, you, you can upgrade the vision of your client with these images. So this is ready, so I'm going to click it. I say open original. I'm going to drag it in. Now something's been happening pretty interesting. Every now and then you'll get words that come in on top of these images, and you say, "Well, what's that about?" I'm not quite sure yet whether it's picking up imaging that has been on uh, that has been put on a like a website with you know how you you'll try to get an image and it'll have all these words across it so you have to buy it I think that's what's happening all right this document I'm going to give it a, a profile and I come up and I say what do we have here it is an RGB 8-bit channel image that's what you got for your money and the image size at this time is 141472 res. It's a three meg file. But I don't like that. So, and the other thing I'll do is say, well, I don't really need that name down there. So I'll come in with a spot healer and I'll do the thing on it. Oh, by the way, I'll show you a trick. This is a new thing in Photoshop. You say object selection tool and you just make a box around it. You hold down the control key and you click in there and you say content aware fill. And you'll get that. Sometimes it works better than others. This one, I, it left a little bit of a fuzziness around it. So I'm going to do it this way. But you get the idea is it works fast. Now, the reason that's happening, I have a background copy layer here that's creating the problem. So I slam that shut, pull these around, 
I'm all good. So now back, if I want to keep this, I say, well, this piece in the corner, I don't like the way it's adding color into a spot. Nothing, it's not adding anything. So a lot of times I'll be working on these images for like a half an hour to get them just the way I want them. Here's a bright spot in here. I'll be doing all this kind of editing to get, as you guys who are Photoshop gurus know how to do all that. And the other thing, you can come in here and start doing stuff with the neural filters and all the other kinds of plugins that you've bought and used over the few years. So there's all kinds of ways of changing the image. So I'll just save this very quickly so I can get into the next section of this. And I'll just put that into my book as a ping file. Here again, you have the choice, or I can say, oh, I'll make it a JPEG. It's, this is what's important for printing. Now, if you're never going to print it, you can, of course, make it an sRGB. Okay, we're all done here. Going back to Discord. What else can we do? Here's a good one. If you put in a word info and hit return twice, says the bot is thinking, it'll show you how much time you have remaining in fast hours. Uh, I have 15 every month. I've only used a few, so I still have 95% of my fast hours remaining, so everything's all good. If I click here, go to your feed, it'll actually show me all the pictures I've created in this channel on a site. All right, now the other thing is, when I click just that, I get all of these things. Imagine, fast, info, relax, ask, fast, help, imagine. There's all kinds of ways of changing these prompts. If you just give it a little shot here, let's go back. I'll do it again. And we'll look at info, invite. Now, down here, it says prefer remix. You want that. So if you're taking notes, write that down. You want prefer remix. And the reason is it allows you to do things. Okay, remix mode is turned off. That's because I already had it on. <laughs> so I have to do it again. Remix. And you want that on. Hit return. Now I can do this. When I go back to this picture, by the way, if you want to dismiss these messages, there's a little bar there, you hit it, so you don't have to look at all that stuff again. If you go up to your picture, the one that you just created singularly, it says make variations, and when you hit that, you get this. It shows you the prompt that you just used, but now if you say, oh, I, I don't want that sharp focus, you can delete it. Uh, I don't want it hyper-realistic either. You can delete that. You can say, in the style of, and then pick an artist, and I'll say, um, uh, let's see. Give me, a give me an artist style. Somebody that's listening in here. Sunflowers, it's got to be Van Gogh, Jerry. Van Gogh. <laughs> that sounds like a winner to me. <laughs> okay, and then you make sure that there's a, a hyphen open between these two and V4. This is saying it's using version four of this program. And you can go in and again, change any of these, but when you hit submit, it's now doing it with the very new prompt. So now we'll see what Van Gogh would say about this. <laughs> I knew you guys would find something good. I'll also show you what all these V's are for down here in a moment, as soon as this clicks out. Yeah, they just uh, re up because of when I signed up at the toward the end of the month, I just got all new fast hours. So that was good for this class. So I didn't have to worry about it. I usually do not use fast. Uh, I found that the slower one, the, re, the uh, relax is fast enough. And when I'm in a big hurry, then I'll 
switch it back to fast. All right, here we go. This is what we got. Let's see if anything different. Doesn't look any different to me. No. Jerry, if you had so, taken out photorealistic, maybe there would have been more of a difference. Exactly. That's what we're going to try to find out. So let's go back and make variations. And I'm going to get rid of... Uh, hyperrealistic? And I'm going to get rid of hyperrealistic. In the style of Les Greenberg. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I've done that with my name, and it was interesting. So in the style of Van Gogh. Jerry, I don't think you want sharp focus either if it's going to be a Van Gogh. Where is that? Oh, I see it. Yeah, let's get rid of that. All right, Unreal, Octane, those will probably be pretty cool. By the way, um, the number of prompts that are out there is an unimaginable. So like I said, I keep everything over here in notes and I highly recommend that. So when I go in, I didn't say, oh yeah, how did that style work? What's this all about? And I keep all this stuff at, see, impressionism, primitivism, cubism, futurism, realism, surreal. There's so many ways of interpreting. And this is a good way to keep organized. And I come into it almost every time I use it. All right, let's see what we got. 71%. See if they have anything shifted. So I still have not seen a real Van Gogh approach, except the last one. They're starting to throw some blue in there. <laughs> Pretty interesting. And these names, I don't I have no idea where they're coming from. I don't know. So anyway, we'll keep playing. The way you do that. You say, well, number one looked kind of interesting. Down here under U1 is V1. When you click that, there's our remix again. So you can do this either as an individual image or in the four, foursome. And so I'm going to change Unreal Image Engine out. I'm going to change out Octane Render. And very detailed cinematic lighting the style of Van Gogh. My gosh, we'll try that one again. So again, you can get to it through V here or variations here. Both are the variations button. We'll see if this worked. While it's rendering, just to uh, ask a very generic question, if you were to sort of ask it to do something sim simple, relatively speaking, for an artificial intelligence program, let's say animals at the watering hole on the savanna. So, I mean, presumably it shouldn't have too much trouble with that. No, it doesn't. Then you uh, basically have that picture. It's not anybody else's picture, presumably, because it's AI, so it made it up of, you know, whatever it thinks the world would. And then you put your wife, who's been sitting in an armchair, you know, with a uh, glass of ginger ale, and you Photoshop that in, okay? Effectively, in that case, you have created an original image yes. that, in essence, really hasn't stolen from anybody, per se, other than perhaps the argument that AI steals from everybody, but it doesn't steal from anybody in particular, unless you put it in the style of. And the... Um, You've got then a kind of novel image that you may find funny or maybe it's attractive or whatever it is, but it's something where you didn't steal, like, you know, you didn't take somebody's generic picture from, you know, Pixabay or something like that of the Savannah. So in other words, you didn't really take somebody else's picture uh, other than AI sort of surveys the entire field of the world and creates an image for you. Is that about correct? Yes, in fact, uh, I had that ex had an experience with that. Um, I go into some of these other channels to see what other people are doing. Mm -hmm. This one guy was going on and on about he had created a black and white image to look like a photograph of people in an office, and one guy had an ink pen in his hand was signing a contract, and he could not get a pen to show up in his hand. 
So I went in, I threw in a few different words, and I sent it back. It came out perfectly, and I sent it to him, but I haven't heard anything back. The point is, what you say is important, and what you don't say is important. So sometimes I've overloaded these things. Another thing you can do, it's fun, is go into books. And I've been doing this with the wind in the willows. And I find paragraphs with beautiful descriptors. And mm -hmm. I'll grab them and put them into this program. And I build right. a series of the animals in that program. All right, here I just said lion sipping water at a pond in Africa. What do you think? What do you think, Carol? And and then Mrs. Silver could be in back in a you know ultimately, <laughs> she could be uh, basically uh, peeking out through the bushes, or she could be doing any number of things uh, that I or anyone else adds into the uh, image, uh, if I'm understanding correctly. Yeah, but you'd have to do that more in Photoshop. Photoshop, yeah, exactly. If I, let, in fact, let's try this as a variation. Let's go into V1 and say, uh, my wife is sitting in a chair beside the pond. Let's see if we get into trouble with that. So now, you have to... I taught a little programming and these gifted kids are amazing with it. These engines that are used, there's two that conflict deliberately. And I was reading up on it and the fact that these programmers, okay, I'll give you another example. I met a kid, he's a Kent State student and we became friends and I said, what is your major at Kent? He says, uh, graphic arts and photography. And I said, could you come see me at my house sometime? He's been here three times. He has changed his major. He's dropped graphic arts. The reason is there are people out there like me. And he now knows he's either gonna have to go with it or do something totally different. So he's becoming what I would call a, uh, he, he, he likes to photograph um, guys who are singing, especially rappers. And he wants to do that now. But he looked at my images, he says, oh my God. I said, this is what's happened in the graphic arts industry. There she is, right there. Well, that's a big lion. <laughs> Let's make these bigger so you can see them. Okay, we got the chair, no woman. He's crossed his hands, pause. Here she is. <laughs> Have to do a work, some work on scaling there. You see how terrible the face is, and that happens many times in these kind of programs. And here's where it's trying to work a, a, a deal with the chair, and it didn't work out too well. But you get the idea. If you wanted it to be real, you'd have to almost do it in a Photoshop situation. Or you can just keep clicking this over and over again until you get it right. In fact, let's do it. Let's just see what else it can do. I kind of like these. I thought it did a nice job. Notice that the reflection is very real. Now, notice the tail coming in here. It does not there. So in Photoshop, I would change that. I would loop that in. Those are the little things you as the artist would have to be very aware to. And by the way, when I put something online and I got something out of whack, I'm always told about it. <laughs> Which is kind of fun. Because people do pay attention. Hey, Jerry. Yes. Yeah, um, just for the sake of interest, um, ask it to the computer to see a $100 U.S. bill. Interesting. You'll probably kick it off. I think it kicked off Jerry. Well, let's find out. Uh, I'm going to kick him off. It made you see it's that. Well, here we go. Because I've had a couple of words I've put in it says uh, it, you can't use them. Right. And what they'll tell you is don't do it three times or they'll uh, take you offline. <laughs> so whatever you do, if it's wrong, don't get excited. Just don't do it again. Okay, notice that this didn't work out too well for the woman. 
She just doesn't show up easily here. So what I would do is I would add more descriptors, where she's sitting, what she's wearing, et cetera, and then I'd get that. Okay, here's our $100 bills, 31%. 62. Who's on that $100 bill? Grant, isn't it? Franklin. <laughs> oh, no. Franklin. It's all about the Benjamin. Yeah, Franklin. Yeah, the Benjamin. German. Notice it does not do well with word text. They're working on it, and some of the uh, other programs do better, uh, especially DALI but not this one. It, <laughs> you're on your own when, it, when you come to text. That's kind of interesting. Just just throw that into Photoshop and you could make a bill out of it. <laughs> I would just scan it if you're in a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just thinking, just thinking. <laughs> now, because that has come up as a question. I'm going to show you a, a trick. And I only show this to people that pay the big money, but you guys are, you're in. So here we go. We're going to take this one, number four, I'm going to make a new one out of it. Should be interesting. If you're going to print it, Jerry, do you go to the uh, up, which that is, oh, and then I do it again to the final number that you want it? I'm holding off on that because at the okay. whole, uh, thank you. And remind me to, get to, to go on to it because that's very important. But I want to show you this trick trick. In fact, I'll get ready. I go to Safari. I put D-A-L-L-E-N. And I have an account. So I'm going to log in. Are you able to see this? Yes. Good. I'm going in. I'm not a robot. Continue. Password. Thank you. Okay. I'm now in Dali and I'll be back. All right. We're still waiting for this guy. This is going to be fun. I think. <laughs> like I said, you pull the lever, you don't know what's coming up. Just thinking a lot about this one. Yeah, the people who are programming this have spent a lot of time, in fact, have delayed issuing their programs until they have really studied and included the, the controls to keep people from doing things with these programs that are really bad news. All right, here's my, here's my boy. Here's the original. I'll pull him into Photoshop. <laughs> Oops, that was like that. I don't want to go there. Photoshop. There. All right. Now, I'm going to save him someplace where I can find him easily. And I'll do that with the desktop. And $100 bill. 100 That's good. Ping is fine. I'm going to save that. All right. Now, here's the trick. You go back to the program DALI, and I thought I'd log in. Let's try it. Yeah. Here it says, upload an image to edit. You click that. I go get the guy, and I say, upload. Now, here's the trick. You crop. So I'm going to take this crop tool. I'm going to move it over top of him. But pretty tight. And I'm going to crop it. And then it says edit the image. So I'm going to click that and I start drawing on just his face. And hair. And we'll leave that. Then I say, I go over to the right and I say, I, well, I have to tell it what to do. I say, a, let's see, give me a woman's name that could be on this. Uh, who would be? 
Charles Theron. Ivanka. Who? Ivanka. Susan B. Anthony. <laughs> no, that's too sensible. <laughs> Emily Roosevelt? Eleanor Roosevelt. Yeah. That's too late. <laughs> Let's try this. Let's generate that and see what happens. So I've gone another. I've edited it and I've said I want something different there. Let's see what happens. You see, I have a lot of them over there too. <laughs> Now you click the one, it has created that instead of him. You pick the one you think is the better match. I kind of like that one. And then you say, okay, now what? Well, we're going to save it to a collection or wherever, or you can just download it right here to the download arrow. And then here comes the exciting part. You go back to Photoshop and you say, okay, where is it? Well, it's in downloads. So I go to downloads and there she is. I'm gonna open it. Okay, watch this. I'm going to copy that. I'm gonna paste it into his system. I'm going to combine both of those layers and I'm going to tell Photoshop to auto align those layers. Just leave it on auto. And that's what I just got. Pretty cool, huh? Well, that's a trick and a half. Of course, then you can go in and do, you know, a little editing on make it perfect. That's how you do it. That's the trick I learned. Let's go back to Discord. Click over here. Now you were asking about what less the um, there's something about the size. Oh, these upscales. All right, we've been working with making the variations. What are these light upscale redos? Well, I want a better picture to show you. So this one is a pretty good one of this lion. So I'm going to use him and I'll, did I already do it? No, I didn't do it wrong. So I'm going to do one upscale. We'll bring it up. Yeah, they've been working on these upscales because of people like us. We say, well, we'd really like, you know, like a 10 or 12 mega, megabyte image instead of these little threes. And they've been working on it, but it's not, it's not well done yet. But I will show you what, what also happens. Have you used Gigapixel on it? Uh, you can. I haven't because I, have, I bought all these frames with the exact 12 by 12 inch openings with uh, mats. And you can make it, can you change the dimension of the picture that's being brought, uh, that's being uh, rendered? Yes. Thank you. I'll show you how to do that. In fact, we can, I'll show you how to do it up here. There is a problem. Let's say that I'm, let's do, yeah, this one again. If I go to the V and I say, Rescale or um, let's see, rescale. And now I can give it numbers like three colon two. Well, if you go back to my notes, I'm looking at it, it says, uh, what have we got here? Journeys. Uh, that's not where I want. Okay. It's not rescale, it's the word aspect. And this is why. Ah, I okay keep all of these in case I forget. Aspect, got it. Thank you. So now I go, okay, now the other th problem is if you try to do this in version four, everything's cool. I'll say submit, but 
I don't like that aspect. My favorite one is 16. Nineteen. Oh, nine. nine. That's my favorite. Okay. But here's what happens. Let's see if it's going to do it for me. What's happened? Uh, it should have shown an error. Version four has not allowed it to do that. It's only allowed you to do a, a couple very simple aspect changes, but I'm surprised it didn't throw that out. I must have typed something in wrong. I have to look. Okay, now here's our lion again. He's upscaled. See, he's got a lot of detail. Well, let's look at that size of file. I there. And this one says three megs, all right? Well, that's what it's been coming in normally. So now I can go back and I say, let's, let's do a, a light upscale redo. If I try it again, what'll happen? Or a beta upscale. If I hit the beta, here's what'll happen. It was coming in down here. Now, notice the 16 by 9 did not do it. It still came in square. Until they get this coded right, you can only do this in version 3. So I would take the image. I would say version 3. I put our two little guys here. And let's see if that works. Oh, so they've changed versions on since I went on there then. Yeah, version four is a new one, but some of the things are still lacking, like okay. what I'm just showing you. Yep, still square. Here's 16 by 9, and it still doesn't look good. Normally it works. I don't know why it's not tonight. Who knows? By the way, when things slow down, remember there's a million people now uh, paying money for this program. So they're all sharing the same computer. So you don't use a detailed upscale re redo then? When I do, I don't get good results. Oh, really? Okay. Usually, see how chunky it is? Yes. This is what happens. Is that what the uh, beta one? Yes. Yeah, I don't like it. See how. It's nasty. Right. It's okay. happening every time, so I don't use it. What I do is what I showed you before. I make it 200, 12 by 12. Okay. Works perfectly. I've been getting great prints from it. I'm glad you're asking these questions. They're good. Yeah, you see what a mess this is? Mm -hmm. Version 3 doesn't, doesn't, it's not as good, but I don't, it also didn't give me my 16 by 9 aspect. No. Why? So maybe oh, I'll try one more thing. If I take this one and I say I want to do a variation, and I'm going to do it in version three, and I'll put this here, and I'll just put in 16 colon 9 and see if it'll remember that. <laughs> One of the things uh, this program will do, it'll always tell you when you've made a mistake in a nice way, a little bot will come up and it'll have a little message for you. Like I said, unless you're trying to do something illegal, uh, one of my friends kept trying to make nudes and uh, he kept getting yelled at a lot. <laughs> yeah, I don't think those are 16 by nine either. It didn't work either. And I don't know what's going on with that. Oh, well. Normally I, I have a beautiful one. Oh well, well you're you're seeing <laughs> this is still raw stuff. But I thought this original image, see how beautiful that is? Mm -hmm. The other one. When you did that beta <clears throat> up scale, it's just nasty. You know, these images are very creative, but they don't look like they're real in the wild. Right. 
again, if I did this in Dali, it would be like a photograph. And that's not what I'm about. I'm a photo artist. Uh, but a lot of people like Dali better because it's photographic. Uh, I prefer working through the art channel with it. But you were using a different uh, rendering also, a different program. I was using, P, wasn't it? I can't remember I, the name of it. I was using Dali. No, you had another one. There was another one that I was looking up. Jerry, have yeah. you looked at Deep Dream Generator? Um, I read an article by a guy who thinks he knows everything, and he says, I'm going to list the top 10 AI programs. I wish I had these ready to show you, but I said, oh, great. So I got on there, and none of them were mid-journey. So I took his first greatest program. I entered it. I got went through the hoops, I put in a prompt, and then I took the same prompt and put it in Mid Journey. Mid Journey just killed it. His program sucked so bad, I never went back. So here's a guy, that, again, he thinks he knows everything. Well, he didn't put in the program that over a million people are using. Well, a lot of people use Dali. Well, again, it's a different interpretation. So I went to another guy, he said, here are the top 40 AI programs. I went through the whole list and Mid Journey was not on any of them. So I went, I did the same thing. I took a couple of his, they didn't even compare. So I don't know what's going on out there politically, you know, who knows, but uh, I'm happy with this for what it does. If you're not, as I just showed you, you can combine Dali and some of its tricks with this one and you'll come up with some pretty cool stuff. In fact, what I do a lot with Dali uh, I'll see a hand that's totally messed up, and I'll tell Dali to make an astronaut's right hand glove, and it's perfect. And then I just combine them like I showed you in Photoshop. So that's how I'm working. It's working good. Let's see what these are. <laughs> what a mess these are. Jeez. <laughs> and again, that's version three. See the difference? Okay, the program was Jasper, Jer. Jasper? Yeah. I'll see if it's on his list. <laughs> I, I think it is. I see. I've read some of them, and Mid Journey's been on most of the lists that I see in Jasper. As it, I'm always looking for something that'll do what I want it to do. So far, as uh, I'll show you what I've been doing, <laughs> you'll see why I'm not really excited about leaving this. Let's go to J. Alvin. And we'll go to RDI. Journey. <coughs> so I wanted a girl in a doorway. How's that? I built this I took fire pictures during the, the uh, downtown Kent fire here a couple of weeks ago and they had a logo of a dragon on the side of their, uh, one of their big station. And I said, wow, I'd like to make that updated. So I created a dragon. I put that fire ax in his hand and I put the Kent fire R1 heavy rescue on it. And they loved it. I said, I'm just updating it because theirs was very cartoonish, but you can do real work with this. All you needed was girl in a doorway to get those images that you just showed? Pretty much. Wow. This is my Christmas card. Everybody knows what this is, right? Mistletoe. Oh. <laughs> the more specific you are, Harry, the better off you are. Depends. Um, some of these, I added a lot of detail and it just kind of, it's interesting, it'll fight with itself and come up with some stuff that you didn't even want. Like this one, I had to redo a lot of the work on this little guy, but uh, because I'm in Photoshop, I can do that. For Thanksgiving, I started making turkeys, having fun with that. But you get the idea, I can create images that for me are very pleasant, I can share them. That was for a city underwater. I like to do a lot of uh, science fiction work. Here I am. I took a picture of my face and I put it in and I said, me in the future. And uh, this is what it came up with. This is my uh, buddy, 
that I grew up with. We were always doing weird things, building rockets and fuel and stuff. So you can start with your own landscape or location yeah. and add something to it? You put your own picture in. Remember how I did that? Yeah, but it seemed like your sunflower, the background did not combine. So. Yeah, and you can change that. You can say background and you can tell it what it should be. So I was just over at um, uh, the guy here in Akron who makes all these beautiful aluminum pieces. And I thought, I wonder if I can do that. And I created these. Now all I need is an aluminum foundry in my garage and I can start competing. <laughs> I said, uh, train going into the future. Here's my Thanksgiving pictures. But you get the idea. And this one, I, uh, the, the kid from Kent State says, can you make that a dog? And I went into Dali. I did what I just showed you and a dog's face came on there. It was perfect. <coughs> now, this is good. This came up. I also use song lyrics. Bob Dylan's my hero. So I love the song all along the watchtower. The prince kept the view. And the lighting itself, I mean, some of the lighting was really quite atmospheric. I mean, it was quite nice. I that was, like, even here, like, that's really fairly well lit. I mean, these are just generated by the time, prompt, somebody use, in a doorway. Or? A lot of times I use the prompt, ambient light. Ambient light. Ambient light. Ambient light. I like that one a lot. That's cool. <laughs> So you see, there's a lot that can be done with this. I mean, look how detailed it is, beautiful. If I did the same in, in uh, Dali, it doesn't look like this at all. I've done some studies with it. It's just not my program. I'm not saying it's bad, it's just different from what I see. I mean, if you were a graphic artist and somebody said, I want a woman in a beautiful dress underwater looking up, would you be able to paint that? I'm sure there's a few people that could, but I'll tell you, it'd be a lot of work. Look at the detail in the dress. I uh, ask it to make some ships at sea, storming each other. This one, I talked about the Ukraine and the problems they're having. This one, I combined a picture that Rod Chris and my buddy shot of some rock formations, and uh, I got this woman's face to incorporate right into it. A lot of problems with eyes. So, one of the tricks is if one comes out good, I just copy it and put it on the other one. I like the way this one came out. Yeah, the city ones come out really nicely. I, rem I remember when I first started doing it. Yeah. The thing about Mid Journey is for me, it's a way of seeing things in new ways. So I took a photo of the moon and I put it up there because it didn't do a good job, of course. But this was uh, my ode to the Artemis launch a couple weeks ago. So again, you can, and I, I love uh, steam, and, you know, patter wheelers and so on. So I was playing with that. my cat okay but you get the idea does anybody have any other questions that they want to ask jerry because he's going to be going through this stuff for us if you want yep i mean look at that <clears throat> jerry i, I agree with i agree with you uh with regard to uh 
the artistic touch that the journey has versus Dali. Yeah, I just find that it's more open to creativeness and journey or uh, Dali is more on task. I like doing things like this. And uh, again, if I were a graphic artist, <laughs> It'd take you a little time. That's a lot of detail for uh, crows. Yes. Doom. Now, this one, uh, one of my friends says, this absolutely has to be the next album cover for Metallica. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> well, think about it. What would that look like? I think it'd be pretty cool. Everybody likes this one. It's a combination of uh, feelings. So you get the idea. Yeah, keep right. asking questions. When I went to the Wind and Willows, these are some of the characters I was able to come up with. Now, you did not scan in any of the book pictures to get these. You just described the, the person, right? Yes, they're only words. Okay. I keep showing these pictures to people and I go, now you have to realize none of these really exist. And they look at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> I said, no, it doesn't. Here you are going to the county fair. There's an underwater city. Now, because I'm a geologist, uh, I'm always thinking about what's going to happen to Yellowstone with that big magma chamber under there. So I created what's going to happen. <laughs> this got a lot of people mad. <laughs> shouldn't show that well it could happen it's happened before someday it's going to happen yep that's for sure but i mean look at these characters they're beautiful now i did a lot of work with hands and the pole because it came out kind of weird but again if you're in photoshop you're you're in a good spot this one a lot of people i i talk about the ukrainian girls and they it really touched a chord and isn't that the point of art Somebody say, yeah, it's not going to be Cleveland. <laughs> now, this is the one I used Dali to create a new hand. Because the one that came in was a mess. You know, Don Drum and I are going to have a talk, but he's going to retire here, so I guess he won't care. Now, again, you can do different kinds of styles. And I don't do a lot yet, but it's very doable. I said, I'm going to make a lab to make my own bourbon. Hmm. But you get the idea. This is what I do. Oh, here's my martini with my hot sauce in it. My buddy was taking pictures of real bighorn sheep. So I thought, well, I wonder what mine could look like in mid journey. What do you think? That's just AI? This is just all AI. No, no starting point? Just said, I said something about uh, bighorn sheep in, um, um, where was I? Somewhere in the West. Yellowstone? Colorado. But I mean, look at that. I like to do things that are interpretive because my wife's a mental health therapist, things like this really jar her at times. This is the inner child escaping. My buddy was shooting a bunch of hawk pictures, so I said, well, I don't have one. I'll make one. Marina, just think if you could do that with all of those big bird pictures. Now, this picture, I used a blur filter on him to make it look like he's being thrown back. So, again, our power is Photoshop, and a lot of the mid-journey people don't have that, so they're stuck. Now, when you have the pictures from the wind and the willows, which actually could have been used in a book 
illustrating the, the wind of the world. The, um, obviously, there's an Edwardian kind of quality to the uh, nature of the image. Um, was part of your prompt, I mean, uh, you were presumably using some of the description that appeared, but uh, yeah, let's say, so, well, maybe not that picture in particular, but when they're in the water or things like that, where do you in fact get the, um, uh, how do you add the notion that it is in fact like, you know, a 19th century English? Well, I tell, I tell it it is 19th century. I got it, okay. Those ships, I said they were 1840. Got it, okay. Yeah, thank you, that's a good question. Yeah, you tell it. In fact, the one I showed you early when I first started using it, the boy with the, the dust storm, mm -hmm. I told it, it was 1930 Dust Bowl. Right. I mean, look at these. You're, we're ready for publication. Right. No, that is something. That really is something. <laughs> I decided I wanted the Himalayas all on my own glass globe. <laughs> And so Maury said something about, yeah, right. I used to live in here. What? <laughs> yeah, I, read, I read that one on uh, YouTube. Wasn't that something? And not YouTube, on uh, Facebook. Yeah. I was blown away. I love these. They're so beautiful. Jerry, if you wanted to use these in a book, what were the, I missed it. What are, are there copyright implications here? There have to be. I, would you well, start off by saying maybe, maybe not? These, these, okay, a lot of people now are putting in AI art or prompt artist or something like that. They're letting them know what it is. And they, the guy who won first place in that big art competition out in the Midwest, he, he told them it was an AI, but the judges had no idea what the hell that was. And so they gave him first place and it made all the painters and drawers and they just went bananas. Sure. But, what I'm telling people is tell them what is the source of your first creative image and then put in, putting in your stuff. You can put your name on it. It's yours. <clears throat> now, these programs say they are, they are keeping the ability to use your pictures if they are wanted to. So what? Uh, these are my images. Yeah. There's going to be lawsuits. I think they're going to lose unless they can prove that that house was the exact one the guy, you know, printed up for Hallmark. And it's not going to happen because these are <clears throat> what are called fusions. They are combining all kinds of data to create something totally new. Hmm. But aren't they fun? I mean, just <laughs> I start looking at pictures now. I, it, They've got to be kind of <clears throat> off the target for me to even look at them anymore because there's so many ways of seeing the world. This is what's coming this weekend. And a lot of people, somebody got yeah. mad at me. My <laughs> hair. <laughs> I taught meteorology. I know this is going to happen. People don't want to hear it. Too bad. It's going to happen. But you get the idea of how how many types of imaging you can do. So my cleaning lady, she loves a Buddha. And so I made this and gave it to her and she cried. She said, oh my God, thank you so much. I made this card for her. Again, I did it while she was cleaning my house. So if you put in those same words, or I put those same words and create that Buddha, we would get different images? They will be different. hundred <clears throat> percent. What if, what if you created a character that you really liked that you that you thought was was cool and you were going to maybe illustrate a book with that same person or or character in various scenes? Can you preserve that somehow and uh, then use guy, it again? There's a guy who I followed in uh, Mid Journey, one of the other channels, and he has already created comic books and printed them and sold them. And what you do, there is a way. It's called you seed the image and it will create as accurately as it can what you just gave it. And he's been able to do it and sell his books. Yes, you can do it. This one's one I did for my wife. Again, she's always talking about the inner child. So I created this and she loved it. There's three inner child pictures for her. Then I go back to my science fiction <laughs> whenever I can. First man on the moon or Mars. 
look at the detail on that helmet. And I like the reflection that it put on the glass. Mm -hmm. I could do this for a long time. I'm not going to. I just wanted you to see what's possible. Oh, this was the very first robot I ever made. <laughs> it was pretty sad. <laughs> I did this in January last year, or beginning of the year. I thought, oh, I want a red robot. See what it shows up. There he is. Not very good. And you see how you have junk hanging out here and stuff that doesn't match. So you have to go in and start working it. But this was really primitive work. And some of these were very primitive. But it gave me the idea that this is where I wanted to play around because look at this ready for framing and hanging. And somebody saw they go, wow, where'd you get that painting? Oh, I made it. You paint? Uh, not really. So you could start with a, like I'm showing you a dahlia from my picture and then take that into some kind of Monet creation and get all kinds of options. Yeah, again, you go down to this plus sign, double click it, go find your image. Let's say I'm going to use one of Jillian's pictures here. And then you click return twice. And it loads it. And now you hit your imagine prompt. And then you just grab the picture and you drag it in. Now there's another thing. If you go to a website and you see photos, if you click and download that HTTP, you can actually use that in here in the prompt. It will allow you to use that from a website. Now, Jerry, when you pull that in, that was a picture that was on your computer that, and then when you, you, all you did was copy it and pull that down in there, correct? This is a photo that Jillian, who's on Facebook shoots, and I made a, a painting out of it and sent it back to her. I do that occasionally if there were, she likes it. So this is a painting from a photo that I had on my, my uh, uh, computer. Yes. Okay. Let's see. Let's go in. I'll show you some more of these prompts. One that, uh, let's see. Okay. Here's an artist and I didn't know who he was. Somebody was talking about him. So I said, well, I better find out. Did I just mess that up? I don't you, think put his, you put a space in. Yeah, something happened. Let's we'll start again. Let's go back to the cube. And I want to undo that. There. So, there. So I copy that. And I just come into this prompt and I'm gonna paste it in the end. I'll say in the style of, and I will hit that and see what happens. And by the way, I did some of the uh, characters from the Wind and Willows using that style and they came out really interesting. My wife hated them. So again, what is art and who likes it? <laughs> it's all in the mind of the person looking at it. Uh, let's see if I can find those real quick because they were, I thought they came out neat. Uh, not there. So is the resolution good enough for large prints? Yes, once you know how to use it out of Photoshop and as uh, they were talking about gigapixel and resize, yes, okay. I've been able to do that. Uh, and it works pretty well. Yeah. Let's see. That would be an issue be under this one. This is where I did it. It's under, it should be under book. And where are those pictures? So basically, you're just doing a lot of this for your own amusement. Yeah, I actually only got a job doing it. 
this is that guy that I just put his name in. This is mm -hmm. his. And I thought they were pretty cool. Here's another one. It's his style. But my wife says, oh, they're too, too much color, oversaturated. <laughs> I didn't think so for a children's book. Our kind of picture, bud. Yeah, that's good. Right, here's what I got with that prompt. <laughs> Pretty interesting. <laughs> So you would just recycle or add some ver verbiage to get a different image with the basic starting point? Yeah, remember this guy here, the double arrow? Yep. You just click that guy and it'll get four new images using the same prompt. But you can refine it further. Uh, if you wanna do that, then you use a V. When you open the V, let's say this one, then you can say, I want to change that uh, effect. I'm going to take out the words in the style of and see what happens. Jerry, uh, does it... Pardon? Why are you does doing it... that, Jerry? Do you have to hit remix in order to get that little box to come up? Because I haven't played in about a month with this. Yes, yes. Remix gives you the ability to do all of that, uh, what I've been playing with. Okay. Yeah, get remix on. Jerry, does it save all the variants? All the what? All the variants. In other words, uh, when you oh, remix it, does it save the original for? All of these are being kept on a uh, part of the site for uh, Mid Journey. I and see. you can go in and, and go in and study other people's pictures and stuff. And there's a lot that this can do. I don't have time to show you everything, but the point is, yes, there's a place that keeps all your images. Now look at these. I've got a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. So. <laughs> okay. What was the last thing? Somebody else had a question. About Uh, we can put our cameras and sell them now, huh? Well, somebody asked me about that. Don't you ever use your camera? Well, yeah, I went out and photographed an otter with ice on his head here a couple of days ago. I said, I still use it, but I spend more time indoors in the winter. So I have something right. else to do. So I'm looking for, you know, go outside and get cold and get, get one or two photos. Just oh. out of curiosity, if you've read about the, uh, uh, technology uh, behind some of this. Yes. Do you know that if in fact, as people generate this stuff and maybe choose to display it uh, or even not, uh, presumably it's learning itself from your behavior relative to what you like or what you do with the images and that becomes part of the algorithm in the future as it in fact tries to make decisions on what to do that is pleasing to people, is that correct? Yes. Probably. In fact, uh... I went to uh, a site that sells art mm -hmm. and many of the art picture boxes on the site had a, an X through it. And the reason was they figured out it was done in AI. They will not even sell it. Interesting. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, what's the name of the uh, most famous photographic group in the world, starts with an M. Um, Magnum? Yes, Magnum. Absolutely do not think about sending an AI image in, in any form. Totally against it. Oh, the other thing is if you're into, like I said, the reading, when I showed you this prompt, let's go back to uh, keynote. And I'll use this one. The, the thing I enjoy is how people are doing this and this, and there's always who are for it, and there's a lot against it. And this, 
I mean, you can go on and on. But when you start reading about what these people are starting to evaluate what's happening, is they see this as a new creative channel that's opening up so many new things. So this one, if you go to these, and I don't know if these are live or not. Uh, let me go to play. I think I can bring one of those up. And let's just pick um, YouTube. Uh, here, here's parameters. But if you go to these these sites, these people have put, there's a lot of people doing a lot of work on this. And what's nice is they're sharing. It's not something they're keeping to themselves. No one else can do it. Jerry, I'll tell you what, take that, that slide that you have up right now and enlarge it and people get you, if you want these sites, take a picture of it with your cell phone camera. Good idea. Then you have it for posterity. Yeah. And they'll also be in the video. Right, they'll be in the video, but I, you know, to send this out to a bunch of people. Now I spent 15 or 18 dollars and I took a course and it was very detailed. It started with absolutely you knew nothing and you ended up doing the kind of work I'm doing. And the guy who is the creator of that, uh, I'm trying to think which one of these was. The Journey Home. Udemy, wasn't it? On Udemy? Yes, yes. And it was very much worth the money. But a lot of these, um, there's a lot more. In fact, every day when I go online, something else has popped up. So my buddy Roddy says, CNN is just running a program right now about AI art and how it's terrible. And I go, okay. So I went to, here's what you do. You go to Safari and you go to YouTube. And you put in, let's say, C N N A I Art. And here's a master class from Kevin Murphy on Amateur Artist Guide Professional Level Art Skills. Well, that's not AI, but this is the hype over art made by AI. And these are very interesting readings. Here's the picture of the guy. One first place. If you have an enlarged prostate, yeah, do this 15 second that. Japanese ritual before <laughs> bed to shrink it almost immediately. <laughs> I'll skip that. I can't say we've ever covered the State Fair's art competition, but this is the first year it has been won by our robot overlords. The winning piece was created by artificial intelligence. Actual artists who got beat out are not happy. It's a great debate oh. for what constitutes art and what AI should do. Here's Noel Brennan. I love a good autumn in Maine. Art may not require an artist, just an author. I picture a banana and an apple doing the fandango under starlight. And I had this vision like a blue tree, huge. And there are bicycles growing off the tree. Using a program called Dolly 2, my coworkers can create paintings. I would like to see a portrait of a wise old woman. She's seen a lot in her life, but she has kind eyes. Artificial intelligence produces very real results, like it did at the Colorado State Fair. I put uh, AI, an AI-generated art piece into the contest in the digital art category, and I won first place. Jason Allen had never entered an art competition before, and he's gotten some flack. They're saying, I didn't make it. You cheated. You're not an artist. I disagree. The AI is a tool, like a paintbrush is a tool. And there is a creative force and a mind behind it. But AI arguably did most of the work. Did the person who won the award create the program? Should the person who did create the program have credit in the award? Jessica Hare also competed in the State Fair and took third. I have been doing art for so long I don't know, but I don't know if I'm qualified to say that it is artwork or is not artwork. I think that art, it, it had a voice, you know, and I think the artist that made it had a voice creating it. Cal Duran judged the pieces, but didn't know Jason's was done with AI. He'd still give him first place. I have got some emails where people were like, you know, art is going to die. And, you know, I don't think so. It wouldn't be fair if we didn't ask artificial intelligence to weigh in. Will artificial intelligence? intelligence make art created by humans 
obsolete. Philosopher AI software can tackle a question like this. AI will never be able to produce this kind of work without some sort of connection between itself and the universe around it. Hmm. Art's always been about technology and uh, we're just entering that new phase. Any of us can capture imagination on canvas. That's that's mean. This is like Van Gogh, right? It's Van Gogh-ish. <laughs> It has legs. The apple has legs. So Jason says he took home 300 bucks along with that first place blue ribbon. He says he really had no idea there was prize money, Kyle. It's a fascinating story. No. So, I mean, he didn't just like shout a couple quick words into the computer and then it made that amazing painting. Yeah, that's what he says. He says he had like 900 iterations of that same painting and he spent, he said, 800 plus hours getting it just right and he's still trying to perfect it. It's like, See, and that's what I've been trying to tell you guys. This is not just the, the image that comes out is not the end result. With the success of my latest book, The 20 Photoshop Formulas, I just Let's stop here. Okay, I'm going to close down for the night, let you go home and start thinking about what you're going to do with all this stuff. Um, let's see, how do I get back? Stop my Stop sharing, sharing. that's it. Um, if I hold this up, this is a card I made using my art. And when you send out artwork like this, it gets people's attention. Yes. So it's just another way of enjoying life and art. <laughs> any any other comments for uh, Jerry or yeah. questions? Really interesting. Yeah, really no, it's really fascinating. Really. Fascinating indeed. Looks like a lot of fun too. It, it's very time consuming, just like anything you do on a computer. Yeah. And you get into it and it, you go on forever. I, I bought the $10 subscription and I got the end of uh, the end of November, I was right near the end of November. I was trying to do some uh, work on it and it said, you've, you've used up all of your fast time. So <laughs> now I know to use the relax, put in the relaxed uh, prompt and then you just do it, right? I guess that's the way to do it. So you can you can go on forever, but it's fun. It's fun. I've shown a couple of things on Monday mornings. So, question, Jerry: Is there a beta testing uh, option if you want to become a beta tester for it? Actually, there is. Um, if you go to the, let's see where it was at. Uh, I saw it online that you can do that because a lot of people who have these skills are going to make a lot of money. And I told my student, I said, if you really want to be where the action is, learn how to program in AI because it's going to be used in nearly everything, including running your refrigerator and your toaster. <laughs> he didn't laugh. <laughs> the only problem is, as they found out, Kent State is not teaching any of this. And so they're pr producing students who will all be unemployed. Yeah. Figures. Well, <laughs> I went there in 1990 to get a PhD in digital uh, photography, and they threw me out. The guy had never heard of it, and he was only a darkroom technician. So I went to Akron U. They pointed me to a tiny PC computer said, well, I, I, I guess you could use this. I said, no, <laughs> I don't think so. So I had to come home and teach myself. So my first all digital art show was at the Akron Art Museum in 1994. And a guy said, how'd you do that? And I said, on a computer. He said, no, you didn't. I said, you're an engineer, aren't you? And he stepped back. He says, how'd you know that? I said, I teach gifted kids who grow up to be like you. Now, do you want to argue <laughs> or do you want to learn about dye sublimation? He became my best friends for the rest of the night. <laughs> so this is the same kind of thing. And I'm glad you guys were here. And uh, there was no blood, right? No. no. Skip. No blood. I love it. No blood, Skip. <laughs> Just knowledge. Yes, I love it. Just knew it. Right. Right. Guys, it's always great to see you. Hope that Les and I can get something together for next year and each other in person. That'd be real fun. That's right. That would be good. Jerry, thanks a lot. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. And I'll be in touch, I'm sure, as yeah. usual. Good boy. Yeah. Great job, Jerry. Yeah.
Take care. I'm the, I'm the sign. I'm the close the program now.